Well, hope you're having a good Friday. And uh, sorry about the camera cutting off my head. This is the best thing I could get it at. It kept falling off the steering wheel. I hope you can hear me because I had to take my Bluetooth headphones out because it was picking up every single bug out here. I mean, it was like there was bugs and then you could like hear my voice a little bit. So I took them off. Uh, hopefully the microphone on the phone doesn't pick up bugs like my headphones do. But, uh, I was going to make a video yesterday because of these police shootings that popped off. Not that that's anything new, but I thought I would uh, just go ahead and toss my opinion into the chorus of opinions that are totally relevant uh, that everybody posts on Facebook and other social media outlets. I'm sure, I'm sure that our opinions are good to hear for certain people, but they ain't going to change nobody's mind about nothing. I mean, nobody is going to look at somebody's YouTube video just because it went viral and be like, you know what, I think they're right. I should make a change in my life. Uh, probably not going to happen. But, uh, and then, you know, stuff popped off last night when a bunch of cops got killed. So now, them first two shootings, probably nobody going to talk about them. So that, whoever did that wasn't really helping their cause. But, uh, I'm going to read your verse. I've used it before in a previous video. Uh, not on, on a different topic, but it was, uh, it worked for this one. First Chronicles 7, or Second Chronicles 7, sorry. And, uh, the problem is that everybody wants to blame somebody else they don't want to offer up a solution I've not yet heard anybody in whatever movement they're involved in I've not heard anybody come up with a solution as to how to fix the problem the problem that they see that statistically doesn't really exist but if someone thinks there's a problem, then it must be a problem, regardless of what the facts say. But no one's come up with a solution. No one, everybody thinks they know what the root of the problem is, but they don't. And they don't, they don't want to address it. Because it's right here. It's right here. And, uh, the problem is people's wicked heart that they're born with. And nobody wants to hear that, of course. And uh, like it says in Chronicles, Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people, now this is talking about, you know, Israel, but it could be applied. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And uh, the age we live in today is all about instant gratification. I want it and I want it now. And I don't want to have to do anything for it if I can get away with it. And they love this part. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. They, I want that. Yeah, I want that. But the part they don't pay much attention to at all is of what God expects you to do beforehand. Humble themselves. Do we humble ourselves nowadays? I mean, people in the secular world, do they humble themselves not really. Pray. Maybe some people say I memorize prayer over their food, but that ain't prayer. Seek my face. Anybody seeking God's face? <coughs> you look at the majority of the country, are they seeking God's face? 
not hardly, and turn from their wicked ways. People love their wicked ways. They don't want to turn from them. They think they're all right, and there's plenty of people out there that'll tell them it's all right. People don't want to turn from their wicked ways, but they do want the other part, forgive sin and heal their land. They want that part. They just don't want to do the things that God said to do in order to, to get that from Him. And uh, I'm not saying I'm surprised by it, but um, if you want God to bless you, I mean, this is not uh, true of God in all ways. Like, He'll bless you just for the sake of blessing. But He's saying here that He will forgive their sin and heal their land if they turn back to Him because they had gone astray. It don't take a rocket surgeon to figure out that America's gone quite astray. And people can, can say, that, oh, that's just bull. That's not, you know, anything to do with anything. I mean, just look at history. All the things that we see today on a regular basis, back in, like, say the 50s, people went to church People were more, I guess, religious, you could say. And uh, some people just did it out of duty. Some people were just religious. They weren't really spiritual. They were just religious people. But they had a morality about them. And the stuff that we see rampant today just didn't happen. You know? Because people had a idea of what right and wrong was right and wrong was because they went to church and learned about it even if they were just doing it for own selfish reasons everybody grew up reading bibles and stuff like that we just don't do that anymore and we've gotten away from all that and we're reaping it now i mean look at people killing people mass shootings cops getting killed so-called unarmed black people getting killed we just get mad, and then we return hatred for hatred, like Martin Luther King said not to do. Well, you hurt me, so now I'm going to hurt you. And it's a vicious circle that we're stuck in, and we can't seem to get out of it. But like I said on my Facebook page the other day, which you can follow, StormerNorman316, you know, facebook.com slash... Storm Norma 316. Uh, like I said, I see people hurting on my, on my news feed and whatnot, and I'm just like, I've been telling you, there's no problem in this life that Jesus is not the answer to. And like I was just listening to Jay Vernon McGee earlier, there's no problem that you have that this book doesn't have the answer to. Now, if you ask me where to find it, I might not be able to tell you. But uh, if you approach this book uh, with an open mind and an open heart, you approach this book expecting to find the answer you're looking for, you'll find it. Guaranteed. But... I just wanted to illustrate the problem that nobody wants to address. That we are a sinful, sinful nation. And if we don't repent, things are just going to get worse. And that's just cold hard facts. Because it says so in here. And uh, one more thing I want to touch on. Is that... I read a bunch of posts yesterday of people talking about how when you say all lives matter, it's insensitive. And uh, I don't know what kind of ignorance that comes from. Like from being insensitive. Like I'm. We are all made in the image of God. Don't matter what color you are, don't matter what your face looks like. 
that we're all human beings made in the image of God. Some of us have different color skin, so on and so forth. And that's why I put the hashtag on my page last night, Sinners Lives Matter. Because we're all sinners. Some of us saved, forgiven, some of us not. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise to some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, sinners' lives matter. Because uh, I, I want you to accept Christ before you die. Otherwise, it's hell for you. So, I don't want you to die if you're a sinner. And if you're forgiven sinner you're going to go be with the Lord anyway so but it would be nice for you to stay alive so you could tell other people but I just I prayed about it last night and I said Lord don't let my anger get the best of me because I've seen my friends posting some things that dismayed me but uh, I managed to keep my cool keep my anger under wraps but, uh, yeah, all lives matter. I don't care to aggravate you, because that's the truth. No one's saying your life matters any less than anybody else, or any more than anybody else. So, that is my video for today. I appreciate you watching. I hope I was eloquent. Okay, I know I wasn't eloquent. But I hope I articulated my points good for you. And I hope you can hear me since I couldn't use my phones. But uh, until next time, take up your cross, carry on.